This message is for Michael over on the forum who left a very compelling message explaining how his circumstance in life is pretty de darn desperate. I mean, uh, in, in a way, I'm almost, I'm almost questioning that what you're describing can be true. I'm not, I'm not saying you're a liar. It's just, it's just hard for me to imagine a place, you know, that bad in, in uh, the area of the world that you live. But I'm sure there, there must be. So uh, this, let's assume that what you're saying is true, that, that you haven't taken any poetic license with this, and that your uh, circumstance with your family is, is true as well, that you're in a, a, a pretty bad place, and you have um, essentially no one to encourage you to a better life, and that you want a better life. You want, you want to get out of there and, and create a better life for yourself. You don't want to just pump gas uh, you know, for the rest of your life. What's that old Bruce Springsteen song, you know? Um, you know for your 18th birthday, got a wedding card and a union, no, got a union card and a wedding coat, right? You don't want to, uh, you don't want to live that life. Um, if this is really what's happening, then uh, I would say you need to, you need to make, it, make your way out of there, right? Let's go down this way. You need to make your way out of there. And here's what I would do if I was in your situation. Reverse course, just like I did. <laughs> You're on a particular track, turn around just like I did and start heading down another track. But before you do that, ask yourself some questions. Ask yourself, uh, what kind of life do I want to live? Get out a piece of paper and write down the qualities of your life. Not a particular job at this point, but the qualities of that life. Like, oh, you know, what type of, you know, I mean, they're, 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 kind, of, they're kind of intangible things. Like, do I want to have a, do I live an, an academic life? Do I want to live a, uh, an outdoorsy life? Uh, uh, a, a playful life, a serious life, a professional life? Uh, do I want to live in an area that is country or city? Or do I want to have some little mix of both? Do I, is, how important is money going to be? Now I'm kind of meandering here. How important is money to, going to be to me in this? Do I want to be wealthy? Do I want to be middle class? Do, am I content with the obvious? Clearly you've already said that you want an education. Would I be content with being uh, educated, yet not necessarily affluent? I mean, there's people who can get by quite well. Education is a wealth on its own, right? Once you have a, uh, an idea about that, if I was you, what I would do is make that list, come up with those qualities, and then try to find, figure out a place where you can make that happen. Now, I hope you don't mind, I'm giving a little bit of information about, uh, about, about you, but you're, in, you're, in, you're on the forum, so I think you're more open to, uh, to having me share like this. You know what I do on these things. You're in Canada. Now, Canada has some great, why don't you, Canada has some um, you know, amazing places off the top of my head for the type of lifestyle I'd like to live, which would be one of, uh, I would want to be in an educated environment, of a place where there are students and maybe a university town, and um, surrounded by people that were educated, <laughs> for the most part, and you know, educated community. That, there's, an, there's, there's, an, there's an atmosphere in those types of places that really, uh, really works for me. It's kind of a vibrancy and, and, uh, and an energy. That, that I really like. Um, I'd want to live uh, 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 probably in the coastal area and I'd want to be a place that had uh, ample recreation, for outdoor recreation. Um, I'd want to uh, have uh, um, a good climate as well. Uh, so clearly, you know, if I was in Canada, I'd be picking Vancouver <laughs> or someplace near in that along, along the west coast there, maybe in British Columbia somewhere. Maybe you can find some place that, that would work. So that's just my example. And then what I would do, and I've done this, I actually did this once, when I, you know, we, my first time I was living in Japan, my girlfriend at the time, we weren't married yet, we decided to go back to the States. We, she and I got out a map, we didn't know where we were going to go, and we, we did exactly what I just said. We ch talked about the life we wanted to live. We got out a map, and we picked a place, we literally got the map, laid it out, and, and went and started picking places in California, because we knew we wanted to live in California, that would offer us that type of lifestyle that I just described. And we picked Santa Barbara, California. A, off the map, a place that we had both been to in passing and never lived there, but we were aware of its environment and the like. And I, I saved up two thousand bucks, and we had a little bit of gunja, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of money, and I got on a plane first and flew over. I got there. I bought a truck for uh, uh, I can't remember a thousand bucks or something like that. It was a little, I had more than two thousand bucks. I had more than that. I had enough. I had, I had about two thousand bucks left over after I bought the truck. And I would sleep, I had this little red truck, I would sleep on the beach, and I would, in the day I would have the newspapers before the internet, this is 1992, I would have the, uh, no, 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 19, 
1992. And I have my, uh, my newspaper, I look for jobs and look for apartments. And I, I mean, it's amazing that you could think that I could even get anything because I had no background in the area, in the community, no job, job history there, nothing like that at all. But I landed, uh, you know, maybe it was, uh, I, I, maybe, I was maybe, maybe I tried a big smile or something like that. I laid it on honest, I laid on honesty and sincerity and uh, the ground facts. I was a young man, a relatively young man, enthusiastic, ready to start my life in Santa Barbara. And I found someone who let me, uh, took a gamble on me, let me find a place in, in their uh, apartment. I got an apartment and then shortly after that I secured a job or didn't pay well. I stayed with that job for four years and uh, built my, established my life in one of the most expensive and difficult places to live in California. And it was just what we wanted, especially the first uh, year or so that we were there, living where we were near the downtown area of Santa Barbara in that eclectic community with that mix of atmosphere. I mean, it was conducive. The friends that we made were the types of friends that we wanted, you know, um, you know interesting, uh, ambitious, out outdoorsy types of people, um, you know, and, and we created that. And you can do the same thing. Now, I did that with very little help or, or assistance. Like I said, I had some money that I'd saved up. Uh, my family did live in the area, but I didn't ask their help. I stayed at my dad's house when I first got to Santa Barbara, just you know, when I first got to LA, just long enough to get my truck, and then like I said, I was sleeping on the beach. So I did it. Here's the, what's the reality about it. It's got tough, it's scary, it's lonely, it's dangerous, and it is indeed a little bit risky in terms of you could wind up homeless on the street. You have to ask yourself, are you willing to take that type of chance? There goes a the bullet train. That's what that is. Bullet train track here. Are you willing to take that kind of chance? Are you willing to gamble a little bit to seek after what you want? Because you don't have a lot of people. If what you're saying is true, and I'm not questioning it necessarily, but I just want to make sure that that's the case. There really is nobody that's going to support you on this. You have to do this on your own. And that may mean that you might have to work two or three jobs, uh, scrounge your money, put every penny in the, in, the, in the bank, and save up the money to make this move. You know, get, you know, find something to do. If you, you, say, you say you can't, after, for three years you haven't been able to find any work at all in your community. Is that really true? It just kind of seems amazing to me. I mean, I mean, what are you looking for? I mean, were you willing to wash dishes? Are you willing to wipe butts? I mean, it's, they're, they're, not, they're not pretty or glamorous, but they will pay the bills. By, by wiping butts, I mean, there are jobs where you're actually... I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's not a nice way to say it, but I mean, I shouldn't say it that way, which, but you're basically helping people, you know, like nursing homes and stuff like that. I shouldn't call them wiping butts. I'm sorry for that. I mean, I did that for a long time. Two jobs I did that. It's a very respectable job. Some of the best work I ever did. I don't know why I call it. <laughs> I'm just being silly. But it is, that shows what it is. I mean, you actually are wiping butts for a living in some cases, and you're, you're doing in and out, and uh, are you willing to do that kind of stuff? Um, if you are, then, and if there's, maybe there's a reason you're not getting those jobs. I mean, look at yourself in the mirror. What kind of persona are you, are you showing yourself? What kind of a physical appearance are you showing yourself? Do you have a resume that actually shows yourself as being a professional and serious about this? Um, those things might help. Also consider uh, doing stuff on your own. Like, uh, maybe you can start your own uh, uh, little business doing something. Who knows? Anyway, get that money, try to get out, and find a way to do it. Uh, worst comes to worst. Uh, worst comes to worst. If I were you, I would, and I was in a really no way out. I would get a backpack at Sears, if there still is a Sears, and I would throw my stuff in the back. I hitchhiked all around the United States and Canada. It's dangerous, it's scary, it's lonely, and I would, I would make my way out there, clean myself up, and try to jumpstart my life. It's not, I'm not saying it's going to be easy or, or, or good or, 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 or without, without risk. It will be. But it sounds like you do what, know what you want to do, and I guarantee you, as much as I can guarantee, that from what I've read in your message, that you want this other life. If you don't go for it, you're going to become uh, resigned and uh, a bit miserable uh, as you get older, and it's going to get harder as you go along. So it's just things to consider. Good luck. You're in a tricky position in any way, any case, whatever you do. And uh, let me know how things go, okay? Good luck, friend. Hi, I'm back a little further down the road. I'm compelled to add something here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't, but this is where it gets kind of weird. I was thinking about what you're about to do, or what, I'm su what I suggested. And if you took my suggestion, and I wanted to tell you a, a little more about the danger um, in the language that I use, which is the path of wildness. I have this, uh, this example that I give of Mount Wildness. It's a fictional place. It doesn't exist. It's in here. And Mount Wildness is like a mountain that you, a wilderness that you enter when you uh, take on life after your, after what you want, after what, after your dreams, and you have the courage. It's the place where your fears are, the fears to do those. But when you actually embark on those things, it's like venturing into the wilderness, 
um, a dangerous place, a fearful place, a wild place, uh, and you are tempted to get it. And it kind of, I use the example of a wilderness, of a mountain like that, to kind of embody the, the to bring together the sense of, bring together the danger, the risk, and the strength of courage, and the courage that it takes to do it. Now I want to tell you, when you go, there's two sides of Mount Wildness, the near side and the far side, and there's various characteristics of the mountain. The near side is where you would be going. If you, if you actually did what I said and you know, made that list and took off like that, or even more so, if you put on a backpack and <laughs> just struck out on life, uh, you're going to be uh, start off on what I call the near side of Mount Wildness. You're, as soon as you embark on, start taking action towards your dream, you're, you're, you're there. Now what happens is, on Mount Wildness, what happens is that you lose, if you don't mind my, my, my metaphysical analogies here, but uh, it kind of, kind of delights me and it gives, help, helps me to share my point. What happens is you lose the things you don't need on Mount Wildness. It's like when I hike, when I'm softy pop, but when I'm hiking through the wilderness, Periodically, I lose stuff. I lost my hat, my orange hat, not the cowboy hat, but the orange hat, my summer hat. A few uh, months back, uh, I've lost a lot of stuff out in the mountains. Sometimes they, I lose, I lose, you know, my clothes get torn and tattered. Sometimes I lose blood. Uh, sometimes I lose my way. You lose things that you don't need necessarily, and it's painful and it hurts, and you, and you miss those things and you pine for them and you want them, and, and they're gone and usually forever. Um, and that's going to happen. Whatever happens along the way, you are going to lose stuff when you are on that trail. Sorry for all the noise here, uh, walking to lunch. You are going to lose stuff along the way. I want to warn you about that ahead of time. That's a part of the process. And actually, that is the most beneficial thing that's happening when you're doing this. You won't know it, but you, you'll be out there thinking, this is really hard, this really sucks, you know, this hitting the road, I know I'm not hitting the road necessarily, I don't want to encourage you to do that, but, but you know, taking this risk, it's scary, you know, and I'm losing things, I lost, you know, I, I, whatever I had at home is gone, and I'm, I'm starting over. And you're, the things, the more, the best things that you'll lose are not the physical things, but the things in here. For one thing, you can lose your, you can lose your trepidation, you can lose some of your anxiety, you can lose some of your pride. Oh, that's the best one of all to lose. And that comes to humiliation, uh, failure, and, uh, and, and coming, up, coming up strong and hard against your own shortcomings. These are the real, real benefits of striking out on your own like this, and striking out towards, your, towards the life that you want to live and embarking on the path of wildness. Now, watch out, though. There's the, that's the near side of Mount Wildness. The far side of Mount Wildness and if the near side is where you lose the things you don't need, like you don't need excess pride or 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 or, or uh, um, a lack of humility, or uh, or you know confidence or excess excess confidence with, with that is unwarranted confidence, things like that. You don't need those things, and you can lose those there. On the other side, on the far side of mountain wildness, that's where you lose the rest. That's where you lose the stuff that you do need, and uh, what you do when you need those things in order to remain a part of. This a part of this connection, this this human human uh, uh, dance or whatever it is, community that we are in. Um, that's a danger. I mean, you can get by, but you can go a little nuts, and you can you get you can lose. You people won't relate to you anymore. You kind of become one of those uh, bleary-eyed, uh, you know, wanderers that uh, people kind of feel sorry for, but they don't really relate to. You know what I mean? So watch out on the far side. Watch out if you go over there. Um, some people can do, can do it and come back, but I, I, I've been there a few times. It's, it's a little more than I can handle. So be careful. Good, good luck. Good luck. Be careful. But and I, was, I made this that last part here. Be prepared to lose something along the way, and don't don't be scared that that's a terrible thing. That's probably the best thing to happen through the whole thing in the long run. Thank you, everybody. Let me know how things go. See ya. Thank you.